Hi, this is Todd Oltoff, and welcome to another edition of Screencasts Online. There have been a lot of photo editors on the market for the Mac, and we've covered many of them here at Screencasts Online. Each brings a different set of tools to help you make your photos look their best. Some even have extensions that work with Apple's Photos application so that you can edit your photos and have them saved back into your Apple Photos library. With recent developments related to AI or artificial intelligence, these editors are getting better and better at automating editing tasks that used to take hours. Photomator is a photo editor that includes a set of AI tools to make complicated workflows such as masking a subject as easy as clicking a button. With this level of automation, difficult edits are quick and easy to do. So let's take a look at how Photomator works and we will start with looking at the Photomator interface. So here we are over on the Mac App Store, and so this is Photomator. Now, Photomator is made by the same team that made Pixelmator. It will sync with all of your devices, so one license will give you the application on your Mac, your iPhone, and your iPad. And so if we just scroll down here, uh, down to the prices, there are in-app purchases for this, and so there's a yearly subscription for $29.99. Uh, they have monthly for $4.99. Typically, the lifetime is for $99.99, but right now they have it for $69.99 on a special. So I've already downloaded the applications. And so here we are inside of Photomator. Now, one of the unique things about this application is it does integrate with the Photos application. And what it does is it duplicates the photo library, all of the different settings that you have in the sidebar. It pulls it into the application. You give it permission up front, and then it connects your Apple Photos library with Photomator itself. Let me just go ahead and pull up Apple Photos just so we can get an idea side by side. So you can see here in comparison, not everything is pulled over. Instead of library, it's all photos. Then they have your recents, your favorites, your edited, and your imports. So it pulls in a few things from over here to this side. But what you can see is it does pull in your albums. And you can see it has my albums, which mimics this right here. It has my landscapes. You can see right there. You can see my family photos, the third-party applications. You can see this particular uh, album right here. And then what you don't see is the video. That's a, a smart album that was set up. But instead of media types, you can see that this is other albums right here. And when it comes to shared albums, here's your shared albums right there. So they're just a little bit different. But if I come over here and just pull this up, you can see there's all the different media types. Now, in addition to the sidebar, which has all of our photo selections, there are some options across the top. I can choose how I want to view the photos, either a square or with the corners on them. I tend to like them with the corners, so we'll leave them like that. I can increase or decrease the size for viewing. And so I'll go ahead and just put it right about there. I can also add photos to the library itself. And so right here, it'll take me into a browser. And so I can add some photos in here. If I select a photo, I can choose to edit that one photo. So I can open the edit tools, which we're going to explore in a little bit. And then we have workflows down here. You can see the different workflows. And we can actually create more workflows, which I'll cover later on in the screencast. And you can choose more than one photo to edit with workflows at one time. I also have the option to get the information on a particular photo so that I can take a look at all the metadata that's included with that photo. I can share from here, and we have our normal share options right here. I can favorite, and then I can search. So that's the interface. Again, it's pretty simple. Uh, what we'll do now is get into looking at some of the editing tools that are unique to Photomator. We won't cover every single tool, but we'll take a look at the ones that are unique, especially the ones that include the AI or artificial intelligence that just make this program unique and make editing simple. That's just a quick preview of one of this week's Apple-related tutorials from Screencasts Online. Screencasts Online is your premium source of Apple-related video tutorials. All of our members get access to brand new, up-to-date tutorials each week, as well as unlimited access to our entire video archive full of Mac and iOS-related tutorials. You can stream and download all of our videos on your Mac, iPad and iPhone, and even your Apple TV using the members-only Screencasts Online Apple TV app. Membership also includes a complimentary subscription 
to the Digital Screencast Online monthly magazine, published each month and packed with videos, articles, reviews, as well as hints and tips covering all aspects of the Mac, iPad, iPhone, and all of the other fantastic Apple products. So, if you're ready to start getting the most out of your Apple devices, visit ScreencastsOnline.com today and become a ScreencastsOnline member.